Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. This is me, William Lease, your number one stop for data journalism, data storytelling, and sports betting. And today we are continuing with the Creating a Sports Betting Model 201 series, section two, part two, video number five overall. And we're gonna talk about data transformation. Now, data transformation is probably the most important part of any kind of sports betting model because you're taking your raw data and turning it into something usable. So what I'm going to do in this video is go over some examples. So basketball is probably uh, the example I like to use the most just because it's the best sport for people to learn how to do sports betting modeling with and sports betting statistical analysis with. In my opinion, it's the best sport to learn with. So I'm going to use a lot of basketball examples here. But what data transformation is, like I said, is you're taking your raw numbers and turning it into statistics that you can use. For example, in basketball, you're, what if you want to calculate a team's free throw percentage? Well, you're taking the raw number of free throws made divided by the raw number of free throws attempted. That's data transformation. You're taking two raw numbers and turning it into a percentage, free throw percentage. Um, you do that for a lot of things in basketball. Like I have done videos on this on the past, but you need to convert your raw numbers into statistics. So offensive rebounding percentage, you're taking the number of offensive rebounds the team had and dividing it by the number of team offensive rebounds plus opponents defensive rebounds that's how you get your offensive rebounding percentage so you're you're turning numbers into what i guess you would call in this case advanced stats um effective field goal percentage field goals made divided by field goals attempted times three points uh three pointers made times 0.5 effective field goal percentage. So that's an example of basketball. In baseball, I guess one of the biggest things you can do with data transformation is calculate percentages. What's the percentage time that a player hit a home run in an at bat? Well, you take his home runs divided by plate appearances. What's the number of percentage number of times the player struck out? Strikeouts divided by plate appearances. What's the number of times the pitcher gave up a triple? Triples divided by uh, batter's face. That's how you do stat transformations in baseball. In football, um, success rate. Uh, that's that's a way you calculate um, a advanced stat in football. Drive efficiency. You take the drive data and calculate drive efficiency with it. So that's how you do data transformations across all these different sports. Just find the stat you're trying to calculate. Take your raw stats that you have. I hope you have a database of raw stats for whatever sport you're doing and take it from there. That is only one part of the equation, though. In college sports, it's kind of optional in professional sports, but I still do it. But you really want to do it in college sports, and that is stat adjustments. Any sport where the schedule's not balanced, you're going to want to do stat adjustments. And even with balanced schedules, it's not going to be balanced until the end of the year. So you want to do this, I think, in professional sports as well. But opponent adjustments. When I say opponent adjustments, I've done videos on this before if you want to look them up, stat adjustments, opponent adjustments. But you're adjusting your each team's or player's stats according to the strengths of the opponents they have played. That way you can ensure that the stats are on a neutral playing field. I've also called it neutralization. I think I did this in baseball, a baseball video called neutralization. You're neutralizing the stats. The aim of what you're trying to do with opponent adjustments is to transform everybody's stats to what the stats would be would be if they had played a league average opponent on a neutral field every game so what their stats would be so for example in basketball right now on this tv to my left oklahoma's playing auburn in basketball oklahoma's played a very difficult schedule in the month of january very hard um, so their stats are probably not going to be very good in the raw but since they played such a tough schedule there if you opponent adjusted their stats they're going to be adjusted upward and therefore um, a lot better in the neutralized form that's what you're trying to measure with opponent adjusted stats i'm going to repeat this again you're neutralizing the stats what would their stats be if they played the league average opponent on a neutral floor that's what you're measuring with opponent adjustments there is a blog post on kenpom.com titled national efficiency that i will link to in the description of this video that i think is one of the best all-time articles that help uh, introduce you to uh, opponent adjustments and stat adjustments and everything like that it's personally the one i've gone to the most when i was learning the concept and ken pomeroy did a very good job of explaining how opponent adjustments work in that blog post so i highly suggest you read it it will be in the description below but 
like I said, that is what you're doing. So there's two parts to data transformation. You're taking raw stats and transforming them into, I guess, advanced stats and stats that you can use. And then you're adjusting those stats based on the strengths of the opponents played to neutralize those stats. Here's another thing you'll do in data transformation, home and away adjustments. You want to adjust based on home and away. In baseball, for example, I adjust stats based on the weather. I try to take the weather out of it. So in baseball, I've touched on this on the neutralization video I made about baseball modeling, is that you're adjusting your home and away. You want to neutralize the weather. You want to neutralize the park factors and neutralize uh, up the, for the opponent. So in baseball, what you're doing with opponent adjustments is if the game was played in a dome on a neutral on a neutral field in a dome with no weather with the league average park dimensions because you also want to neutralize the park dimensions because uh, a triple in San Francisco is a lot different than a triple in Philadelphia, for example, because San Francisco's park has the most number of triples in the majors. And I want to say Philadelphia has the least because the dimensions are so small. So you want to neutralize for those things as well. So you can call it opponent adjustments. I like to call it neutralization because that's the ultimate goal. You're trying to neutralize all the randomness out of the stat. Therefore, you can compare the statistics apples to apples. That's what you're doing with data transformation. You're transforming raw numbers into usable stats that could be measured, compared, forecasted, predicted, whatever you want to do. That is the whole point of data transformation in a model. It's very important. It's what you're going to spend the most time on, the most important step of the process. You can't get to predicting without doing some serious data transformation. But anyway, that wraps it up for this video on data transformation. I hope you enjoyed this video. Again, just an overview. I'm just talking. These videos are not going to be programming tutorials, anything like that. I think those days are behind me. If you want that type of stuff, it's something you would have to pay for. And I just don't know if a lot of you guys can afford my consultancy fees. So that's just how it is. But anyway, that wraps it up for this video. And the next video, we are going to talk about... Preseason estimates, an important video, but a necessary one. So I hope you stick around for that. But until next time, this is me, William Lease, signing off.